so first off, can you just uh, give us a, a self-introduction, just name and... University. My name is Yeriv Tsvati, I'm from the University of Haifa in Israel. Um, this is my 12th ICA conference and I'm also vice chair for the political communication division. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so the conference covered a variety of factors that could influence the third person effect. And we know uh, that some people refer to it as third person perception as well. So I want to get your comment on that first off. And uh, also if you could just explain maybe some of the new ideas that have emerged recently uh, in this research field. There's much research going on, so there are many new ideas. Uh, I'm for the term third person perception. I think uh, more accurately we're talking about the perception that media influences other people uh, more than oneself. Um, and the reason it's get, getting so much attention is that people are, are looking for the insinuative ways in which ma media sometimes shape reality more uh, indirectly. Uh, probably through the perceptions that they're influential, and that's the that's where the effects uh, uh, get into the picture. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. And uh, your specific paper looked at media influence on news about science and scientists. Can you briefly uh, sum up for us what your study looked at and what it found? Sure. Uh, it was a study of uh, scholars in my university in Haifa in Israel, and they were asked about their perceptions of the influence of them being covered by media or appearing in media uh, on various aspects of uh, their career. So, uh, uh, for example, um, being interviewed will bring me more students or better students, will attract funding, will help my research get published, will help me get more prestige, and these sorts of uh, perceptions were then correlated with their uh, motivations to, uh, to uh, cooperate with journalists and then uh, with, uh, with their actual coverage by media as measured by content analysis. So when we uh, scholars perceive uh, going and cooperating with media is good, we, uh, we make an effort to do so, and when we make an effort, uh, we succeed and get more, um, get more coverage. That's the bottom line of the research. Okay. Um, the idea of a moral outrage was highlighted in the third article, and this idea actually runs through a number of the presentations. How central do you think that moral norms are in the emergence of the third-person effect? I, I think it has a component, but not necessarily. Uh, the, the, the context in which my paper was situated was a context in which going and appearing in media is not necessarily bad, so there's no um, uh, embedded uh, moral out, outrage uh, implied in this context. Uh, some, some scholars think that it's good, other scholars think it's bad for science, and uh, there's no uh, uh, consensus as opposed to areas such as uh, sex or violence in media that the effects are 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 actually bad. Uh, so so, but but still, moral outrage is probably when you're talking about negative effects, it's probably a central uh, uh, construct to help us better understand the um, uh, the perceived effects and probably their consequences. In, uh, of course, we're at the International Communications Conference, and uh, here in Singapore, it's uh, often considered a convergence of many different cultures, and we talk a lot about the westernization of attitudes, and some of that is brought about through uh, media from other countries. Uh, the, the U.S. has, I think, historically had a preponderance of, of media programming uh, distributed throughout the world. What, what do you think is uh, a potential uh, factor here in determining whether third-person effect could emerge from global media programming and what impact that might have? Um, it's an interesting question because you actually you can act ask uh, people in Singapore about their perception on how these texts presumably 
immoral Western uh, texts influence the Americans versus influence people here in Singapore. And this would be a, a nice example of a uh, third person effect, uh, uh, cross cultural third person effect implications. I was sorry to see that uh, Aziz Dwai uh, did not show up for the panel, and he could have answered your <laughs> question better yeah. probably than me. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, so what, uh, what are you working on? What are some of the uh, things that we should be uh, considering with uh, regards to study and research, uh, looking towards the future of, of what needs to be done? What needs to be done is more uh, um, um, experimental research actually demonstrating that the perceptions precede the, the behaviors and also um, using more uh, behavioral measures of the end results. What we have to date is uh, uh, a lot of uh, papers demonstrating that perceptions shape other perceptions. What we need to see more to demonstrate Davison's argument uh, is that uh, uh, perceptions shape real-world uh, behavior. Okay, thank you. Thank you.